Hi, Leo. Your last opponent, Kat Zingano, is fighting for the featherweight championship. If you win this weekend, do you believe you deserve a title shot? Um, yeah. Okay. And then um, you're facing an Olympic wrestler in Sarah McMahon. Do you think that your judo and submission attempts can cause her problems on the ground? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, it's an exciting style matchup. Obviously, she's a high-level wrestler, and I've got a black belt in judo, so it's going to be um, probably going to enter into the clinch quite quickly to see, you know, it's going to be a lot of scrambles, and I'm used to that kind of tough, grindy fight. I had it with Kat, so it was good to have that experience. You know, she's a, a good wrestler as well, and I feel like I dealt with that well in the last fight so yeah hi Leah you spent some time at Bellator Dublin how was the time at the event and what did you do yeah well I am um, obviously I fought there like five six times and I live in Ireland so I actually got to go with my daughter Isabella so it was good to get down and just be down and get in amongst the environment and the buzz and uh, that kind of feeling of fight night so it was a great night yeah so fighters always like to say that it's not a loss, it's a lesson. What lesson would you say you learned in your last fight against Kat? Um, I think in a lot of positions, I could have finished the fight if I had to just be more patient and not, you know, maybe went for submission attempts. I think um, my game has grown from looking for submission to, you know, maintain a position in striking, which I think we've done a lot of this camp. Um, it's definitely added a lot to my game, fight IQ wise as well. I think, um, yeah, it was a big, there was a lot we could take from that fight. Although, you know, we did believe we won that fight, but there's a lot of uh, good stuff we got to work on back in camp, you know, day in, day out. And it was a great, great fight for my, um, just my, my progress and, and my, just to level up. How do you think that fight between Cat and Cyborg goes? I think it's o it's going to be always hard to bet against Cyborg against any opponent, but I believe that you know if Kat, she's a, she's a, um, she's beat some of the best in the world and she still has it, so it could go anyway. What's up, Leah? Uh, you always have your team around you, a couple of people around you here at these fight weeks, but someone that stands out, Meatball Molly McCann, who's sitting right back there. What does her presence mean to you on these fight weeks, and what has she meant to you in your fighting career? Yeah, she's just invaluable. It's like there's no, I don't think you can put into words her presence and energy and confidence she always gives me, not even in fight week, just like day-to-day -day life and training. And we've been best friends for years and years, so it's definitely a massive um, asset to have her here and any anywhere, really, yeah. And your last fight was in San Diego. Your nickname is The Curse. You brought the storm to San Diego last time. This time we got great weather. How do you enjoy, uh, how do you like San Diego? Believe me, a lot of things have went wrong this last week. <laughs> we'll talk about it after. But yeah, it's been unreal. It's beautiful here. It's um, it's nice to get in the sun because obviously Ireland, UK, it's always cold and miserable. So <laughs> yeah, it's been nice. Thank you. Hey, Leah. Uh, your first win was a pretty big one in your career. I mean, especially in hindsight, win over Mena Fioro, who's going on to do great things at flyweight in the UFC. Just curious, you know, having fought her, you know, back then, are you surprised to see the success that she's had uh, in, in the future now? Um, no, I think she's a beast. She's always been such a high level. She was with, with a great fight back then, and it's, it's great to see her doing so well. Yeah, I think she'll be fighting for the title next or in the next couple of fights, but. Yeah, it's nice to see our kind of generations meeting the um, old generations. Like my, the girls I'm fighting at the minute, they're like ten. They have ten years on me, and double the amount of fights. So and, and we're up here trying to, you know, push the boundaries and, and hold our own. So it's good to see the new generation coming through. Yeah, absolutely. And you said you think she'll fight for a title. Do you think she wins the title though? Uh, I think she could do. Yeah. Of course, of course, and obviously a big event here, Bellator 300, a big main event uh, with the lightweight uh, Grand Prix. Just curious, a prediction on the main event, Leah, anything there? Oh, I don't know. I'm excited for all the, the main card fights. Um, oh, I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Leah, how's it going? Last time out wasn't the result you wanted, but now you have another opportunity against Sarah, who has fought the best of the best and is a fantastic wrestler. What do you do differently this camp to change the result and come out with the win this time? Um, do you know, we prepare correctly in camp. We train, you know, we, we, we look a lot at my opponent and my last fight and what I need to improve on, what 
um, areas of my game I need to always work on and it's not really doing anything differently we're doing the same thing we're just getting better and improving and, and improving my kind of um, just bringing out the best to me when I, when I get in there I feel like I've never really shown my true potential yet I think it just comes down to believing in myself and I just you know I got a lot of belief from that last fight and and confidence from it so uh, I hope to show that on Saturday what does it mean to you to be one of the fighters on this historic card, Bellator 300? Um, it's an honor to obviously fight on such a historic card and Bellator have do done a lot for my career and I'm very appreciative and grateful to be here. I never take these opportunities lightly and I'm definitely, you know, feel a lot very, very blessed to be here amongst such great names. And last one for me, what do you think about the gold gloves? I'm obsessed, I love them. As soon as I seen them, I was like, are we fighting in these? So yeah. Thank you, Leah. What's up, Leah? You've always been a fighter to embrace all of the places you go and fight at. How are you enjoying San Diego this time around and uh, any places that you have visited that you enjoyed? Yeah, I love, I've loved it so far. I've never been to San Diego before. I've been to LA a few times and I've competed everywhere doing jiu-jitsu and judo. So it's nice to be in a new kind of environment and the sun shining. And it's, it's got, it brings good energy, yeah. And recently we saw Patty Pimblett take a fight with Tony Ferguson. Uh, what are you expecting from him and what is your relationship like with him with Patty? Yeah, we're all you know, we're on the same team, we're all next gen, all you know, train every day together, day in, day out. He's looking unreal in the gym and he's probably gonna get a, a big big finish. Thank you, Leah. Hey Leah, how's it going? Hi, good, how are you? Um, how much do you factor in the weight class with the fact that, you know, you're primarily a featherweight. She is, uh, Sarah's sort of moving up here. Uh, I mean, she had the, obviously, uh, she's had a featherweight fight, but you're, you're sort of the mainstay in the weight class. How much do you factor that in the matchup? Um, not too much. I think, you know, it's going to come down to skill and will on the night. I don't think weight is going to come into a big part of it. Um, obviously, I'm going to have the reach and the, and the height advantage, but she's a wrestler. She's, you know, it might be beneficial for her to be, shorter so uh we've definitely worked with a lot of smaller opponents this camp i think that was maybe part of the factor in in the cat fight i, I kept losing position because i was used to sparring bigger guys and bigger men when females body shapes are obviously different it's hard to get sparring partners to replicate their movements and i think that was one of the the biggest learning curves in the last fight did you work specifically with any wrestlers for this camp just with her style um the last camp i worked with some commonwealth wrestlers and we brought that into this camp a lot of the guys are high-level wrestlers that I train with and spar with every day, and um, yeah, it's it's obviously we worked a lot on um, that kind of entering that that kind of fight. But I prepared to fight um, standing when it hits the ground anywhere. Is it a bit easier preparing for an opponent like Sarah, where there's a lot of tape on her? When she signed with Bellator, I'm sure you had it in your mind you'd be fighting her. Does that make the preparation different than say like a new opponent? I suppose so. You know what, 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 where her skill base is and where she's probably going to want to take a fight and how she deals with different situations in there. You just got to have a lot of fights and you can watch a lot of um, different styles of opponents. So it is good to see that. And what are you doing for downtime during fight week? Like, what do you get up to? It's great weather out here. Are you getting out a lot? Or, you know, obviously, I'm sure you're making calls back home as well. How are you sort of balancing that side of things during fight week? Yeah, just um, rest in the body and trying to just get into the flow of it and, and obviously we cut tonight and then just get ready for fight night. But yeah, obviously ringing Isabella, <laughs> my daughter. Thank you. Hi, Leah. Um, so yeah, this is the second straight uh, former UFC title challenger. You fought both lost to Ronda Rousey, um, but they're still both big names, both pioneers of the sport. I know it's the fight game. You you respect any opponent the same. Anything can happen in the fight. But does it motivate you more fighting these big names, knowing what beating them can do for your brand? Yeah, it's like if I if I was choosing opponents, it would have been Kat, Sarah. Like these names are the ones that excite me the most and motivate me the most. I think they bring out the best in me. Yeah. I think that when there's a higher level opponent, it brings out the 
best of me even in camp and on fight night so it's definitely the name i would have wanted if it wasn't another fight with cat yeah and you're becoming a big name yourself one of the reasons is uh you take your social media very seriously you take your marketing very seriously uh what is your advice to other fighters i mean would you give would you say that fighters should make more branding and and, and be trying to become more marketable priority um i don't really take it very seriously i just be myself and okay. do my do my own thing i try and just show my training in my life and, and be me so yeah awesome thank you for your time thanks